It's easy to think of Copilot for Microsoft 365 as some amazing AI advance. And it is, but it's also a lot more. Compared to tools like ChatGPT, or even the Copilot that was formerly known as Bing Chat, what really sets it apart isn't some wondrous AI innovation, but it's context building and orchestration capabilities based on the data it has access to. In this video, I want to dig under the hood of what Copilot is doing with your data. Where exactly is it getting your data from? What data doesn't it see? And what should you know to make sure you're getting the most out of this tool? But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. If you're interested in working with me, or you'd like to learn more about my book on AI adoption for SMEs, who's in the co-pilot seat, check out the links below. Microsoft 365 allows you to build up an amazingly complex array of interconnected data, which, if you've deployed its tools across a good portion of your business, really tells the story of how work works for you. This interconnected data layer is referred to as the Microsoft Graph, where all of your files, your emails, your chats, your contacts, and much more are understood as a picture of what relates to what else within your organization. If you choose to use a tool like ChatGPT to help you with your work, then probably a lot of the context you need to get the best help comes from your Microsoft Graph data if you use Microsoft 365. You might copy the body of an email to ChatGPT and ask it to help you draft a response. Whereas in Outlook, if you're using Copilot for Microsoft 365, you just ask Copilot to help you with your email response right from where you're ordinarily working. Both ChatGPT and Copilot use OpenAI's GPT large language models. And so given the same prompt and the same context can probably do a roughly similar quality of job. But the amount of work needed to get ChatGPT, the contextual information required to do that job is strikingly greater than with Copilot. And this is really the special power of Copilot. It takes the legwork out of discovering context and applying the outputs of your request. But with anything to do with working with AI, understanding what's going on in the background to empower yourself as the human supervisor of this technology is really important. As ultimately, it's you and not Copilot who is responsible for the content of that email or the analysis of that document. No matter how easy it's been made for you using those AI tools. Copilot for Microsoft 365 gathers its contextual information based on the data index it has access to. This index, known as the semantic index, is built using the data in the Microsoft Graph. Each Copilot user has their own personal index of files, emails, chats, etc., that are theirs within the context of what they work on. There is also a tenant level index that indexes those items shared with at least two people in the organization. Slightly different types of data are indexed in both categories, and always what you can access is based on your normal security permissions. So just because there is a tenant wide index doesn't mean you can suddenly access every file. On top of this index based on graph data, Copilot's reach is extendable using a range of extensibility options, including graph connectors that extend that graph index and plugins that range from Teams messaging extensions to Power Platform connectors. Right now, much of this extensibility ecosystem is in preview, but look out for another video digging into this issue soon. When you make a request to Copilot, before your prompt ever reaches the AI model, it's enriched using appropriate contextual information based on those graph indexes. But depending on where you make that request, that context can change. And not all Copilot experiences, at least not for now, are created equally in this regard. Before we dive into a couple of demos, if you're enjoying this video and it's bringing you value, please do hit the like button to help it get in front of a wider audience. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so to see more like this. Here I have Microsoft 365 chat open on the left and Outlook open on the right both logged into the same account enabled with Copilot for Microsoft 365. As always, the demos in this video are set up so that they're on demo accounts and not sharing anyone's private information. 
In Microsoft 365 Chat, I'm going to use the prompt, write an email summarizing the progress on the fabulously fun spaceship project so far. This is a kind of demo project that I've used in a lot of my demos up to now. Whereas in Outlook, I'm going to use the draft capability to say, create an email summary of the fabulously fun spaceship project. Now you'll see that Outlook's response is less specific. And the reason is, because it's just making it up. You don't have the ability to draw on content or context outside of the email thread, even from other email threads. So if you want to write an email focusing on specific content, you can't do that from Outlook, only from Microsoft 365 chat. This unbalanced experience is not necessarily clear from the outset. A new user might well think that anywhere you can talk to Copilot, you could just do exactly the same things. But this simply isn't the case. You can't, for example, pull down from your emails to draft a document in Word. You can't turn your meeting transcript or whiteboard into a presentation using Copilot in PowerPoint. In fact, the only place you can really bridge the gap between services is Microsoft 365 chat. And that'll be the place where most of that extensibility stuff I talked about before will happen as well. Now you could see these as weaknesses of Copilot, but just because it's an AI tool doesn't entirely break the paradigm of a certain tool being more suitable for a certain job than another. If you went and opened up a toolbox without any prior knowledge, it might be hard for you to work out that a hammer is for nails and a screwdriver is for screws. And this is why just grabbing random tools without any training or experience is normally a recipe for disaster. The same is true with Copilot. Let's think for a minute about meeting transcripts. This is another amazing power of Copilot, and I made a whole video about how Copilot works in Teams. I'll put a link to that down below. You could take a recorded meeting and leverage that content elsewhere. But what Copilot can access is only as good as the transcript. If you or your colleagues are mistranscribed in a meeting, that content isn't going to be available to Copilot through search. It'll only be available if you explicitly call out that particular meeting when you're prompting. For example, in these demos, I found that I was able to find information on the fabulously fund spaceship project, but not the fabulously fun spaceship project based on being mistranscribed. There is a process you can go through to switch out the transcript of a recorded meeting. But unfortunately, if you do this, Copilot simply loses access to the content as if the transcription has just been deleted. It doesn't change its understanding of the text based on what you changed. You could also hit capacity limitations with Copilot. For example, here is my recent book, Who's in the Copilot Seat, open in Word. It has about 36,000 words. Now, when I first started using Copilot, it wouldn't even agree to look at a document this large. And that's because you have a capacity limit of about 20,000 words in Word. But for example, let's skip ahead to page 121, nearly at the end, and I have a section here on how I used AI to help with the creation of the text. And one of the examples I use is using Claude. So I'm gonna ask Copilot, how was Claude 2 used when writing this document? It's clearly outlined there. But the response it gives is, there is no mention of Claude 2 in the document, so it's safe to assume that it was not used when writing the document. Well, that isn't only incorrect, it's wildly incorrect. Now that isn't the only response it gives, sometimes it just gives an error, but that's the most wrong example. And if you went ahead and you believed Copilot and you used that in some analysis that you were doing of a document, you would be completely wrong. This kind of limitation applies elsewhere too. For example, Copilot doesn't necessarily look at everything in very long email threads. Now obviously being forewarned about these kinds of issues allows you to avoid asking Copilot to look at something that's too long for it to understand. There are two more data limitations that I think it's important for Copilot users to understand. The first is that indexing takes some time. So if you create a new file, you're not going to be able to reference it in Microsoft 365 chat or elsewhere immediately. The documentation points to some scenarios where content should arrive almost instantaneously, and others where for tenant-wide indexing, things are only indexed once a day. But I've generally found that anything takes at least a few minutes to show up and be usable by Copilot. You might be wondering when I mention indexing lags, how this relates to security. Okay, data takes a while to show up, but I'm more worried about data that takes a while to vanish. Let's go back to the graphic I shared earlier on. 
One of the important things to understand is that Copilot's technology builds in steps to ensure the responses are checked against your compliance and access control settings. So always what you get adheres to what you have access to. The second data limitation that I think is also hard to understand at first, is just because it's in Microsoft 365 doesn't mean you get to access it in Copilot, even if you have permission. You're not seeing the content of SharePoint pages or lists or publisher files or access databases or really anything that isn't in that table I shared at the start of this video. For some of these types of data, extensibility options will allow you to get to them if you need to. For others, it's just less likely. I mean, the end of publisher has been announced, so we're not gonna see Copilot integration popping up there. But just because something is digitally in your OneDrive doesn't mean Copilot magically can do something with it. My hope is that some of these limitations will vanish over time. I truly hope the interoperability of Microsoft 365 Chat is integrated generally into the Copilot panels in apps over time. And I'm excited for the extensibility options for Copilot that will allow us to work with more types of data more flexibly. While any software will have limitations, I'm not sure Microsoft has flagged enough of them that are contrary to what you might logically think the tool should be able to do. Though while it's easy to show you what has been referenced in a response, it's far harder to come up with a way to flag to you what hasn't. Are there any limitations or data focus features I'm missing here? I'm interested to learn your initial experiences with these types of issues. Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.